Okay, welcome to another Lunar Flight video. In the first video that I did in this little Lunar Flight series that I'm working on, we did a data survey mission. In the last video, we did a transport, uh, or rather we did a lost cargo mission, which ended up being really easy. I am actually a little disappointed that that one was that easy. Usually the lost cargoes are a little bit harder to find, but we just got lucky on that one. So this time, let's go ahead and do a transport mission just to see what that looks like as well. And then I probably will also do a couple more videos where we'll change maps because uh, there's three different kinds of maps. The one that I'm currently on, I believe, is the hardest of the three lunar maps. But let's go ahead and go to missions. So we did lost cargo already. So we'll just go ahead and take this first transport mission. So accept. So we have to transport 2,000 kilograms or whatever it is of cargo over to Bravo and we'll get $2,500 and 250 pilot experience points for doing that. So we can go to map and select Bravo, but we can also just hit select navigation here, and that will automatically select Bravo for us. So this will actually be a fairly decent mission because we pretty much have to cross the entire map. So as before, um, we'll make sure that our vehicle is repaired, fueled, and we have additional fuel canisters. I found these additional fuel canisters to be really important early on, but now that I've gotten a few fuel upgrades, fuel efficiency upgrades on my engine, I don't find these fuel canisters to be as vital. Um, so it might be better at this point to have other types of items carried along, like maybe boost or something like that, but we'll save that for another time. All right, so let's go ahead and hover up, and we pretty much need to do a 180, so I'm gonna press the right, bump I think it's called and hold that down just to start yawing around and you can see if I take my finger off the I was gonna say if I take my finger off the right bump it stops yawing because of that yaw dampener but it's it wasn't doing it but now it's dampening the yaw like I'm not putting in any reverse yaw at the moment but it's kind of canceling it out for me so I'm pretty much gonna put that center point right there and then kind of zero out my yaw and I know my V-rate's high enough to clear those hills, so now I'm going to tip the vessel forward pretty aggressively and just put in a lot of forward power because we need to cross the entire map. Even so, we don't want to go too crazy aggressive, I have found, with the velocities because the distances that we're talking about here aren't that big. So probably like 15 meters a second on your velocity around there, depending on how aggressive you want to be on your braking. But I'm going to say that's pretty good. You know, we've got quite a bit of forward velocity now. Let's go ahead and make sure that the velocity vector is above the horizon. And it is, but just barely. So as we're going forward here, we're going to need to compensate uh, our vertical rate to keep ourselves from crashing into the hillside. And there's also an, an antenna there on the left. So I want to make sure the velocity vector stays above that as well. We can see we're pretty much almost halfway to Bravo already. So we move pretty quickly because these distances just aren't that much. So you want to be a bit careful about, you know, putting in too much velocity in any one direction because you'll just, in, the, in this particular game, you'll actually fly out of bounds. So I'm going to start uh, backing up here just a little bit just to kind of get ready to cancel some of this velocity out. Yeah, let's go ahead and start canceling out some of this velocity because we're most of the way there. So we'll go to about 80 degrees or so. And I'm going to bring down the forward velocity to, I don't know, let's say five meters a second. That way I'll be able to control it with the translation thrusters just using the stick. And we need to pay attention to our V rate as well. So I'm going to say that's good enough for the velocity because now we're still moving towards Bravo, but just not so quickly. So you can see the distances here, you know, they're, they're not that, things just aren't that far apart. Um, you know, when you, contrast, con when you contrast that with like playing Orbiter, uh, you know, in Orbiter you get used to putting in like hundreds of meters a second to go somewhere because things are pretty far apart. But in this lunar flight game, you want to think more in terms of like 5 meters a second, 10 meters a second, instead of 500 meters a second or something. So we're getting pretty close to our to our base. 
So I'll switch to the C camera, which I now know does exactly what I want it to do. Learned that in the last video. So you can see there in the C camera we have the base targeted. We have our that plus sign is our velocity vector. So just kind of paying attention to that. And I can also see just from the base that there aren't any antennas in our way. Uh, I will start slowing things down though. We're still moving it you know, five meters a second, now four meters a second. All right, I'm a bit more comfortable with this speed based on how close I am to the landing pad. <clears throat> and I also saw on the developer's page, uh, I'm actually blanking on his name. So I won't, I won't try to say what his name is. I think I know it, but I'll, I'll probably get it wrong. But this game also supports... Um, like Oculus and stuff, and I think it would be really cool to, to play this. I'm not huge on the VR at the moment. I think it's pretty expensive, and I am the type of person that's easily susceptible to motion sickness, so I'm not sure that I would be able to handle it, but uh, I would love to try something like this with, a v with VR goggles. Taking out some more forward velocity, and now we're just gonna touch down like so. All right, and now once again we go to the cargo and we're just going to unload. And once we are unloaded, we will get some money. So again, not going to save the replay, going to close this out, going to refuel our vessel first. And let's see now can we afford Okay, so now we can afford an upgrade. So let's see. Let's try So it looks like we already have the highest efficiency on the fuel. Um, let's go ahead and buy the RCS. And it's active. Alright, so those those go pretty quick. So let's go ahead and do another transport. Um, actually, let's try a lost cargo. So we're just going to accept this lost cargo. And it's going to be north of Delta. So we have to, we have to fly to the other side of the map. And it's going to be somewhere in this area. All right, so let's go to the cargo, make sure the transponder is turned on, and go to the map, and let's close out our shop, and let's hover up, and it looks like it's probably, let's rotate counterclockwise. So hover up and start rotating. And we pretty much want to rotate to about, about right there, so I'm going to take out all the yaw. And we need to cross the map, so I'm going to go ahead and pitch forward to, you know, 60 degrees or so. That will put the majority of my uh, thrust into forward movement. And I got a lot of V-rate. I don't like to see my V-rate go that high. That means I'm going to shoot way up. So I'll go actually all the way to about, you know, really close to 90 degrees. So, you know, if you look at the vessel, we're pretty much laying on our side. Okay, so that I don't want to have too much forward velocity because, again, these, the distances are not that vast. And it looks like I have a little bit of pitch, so I'm going to use the right stick to correct that pitch. I went the wrong way. Or I should say roll. And there we go. You see our velocity vector coming down, which means we're pretty much reaching our apoapsis in a, in a sense. And again, I don't know where that cargo's at, so this is going to be a bit of a scavenger hunt. We just know that it's somewhere north of Delta. Let me just double check that. Missions, lost cargo north of Delta, yeah. And that's as specific as it gets. So here's Delta, so anywhere like in this vicinity. All right, let's uh, pitch back and start taking out some of this forward velocity. So go to about there. Okay, so now we're still moving at about close to 7 meters a second in the horizontal direction. V-rate's coming down. I think that's okay because we're at 420. I assume those are meters. And we just don't need to be that high in this game. You can go out of bounds. It's not, you know, it's not orbiter, so it's, we're not 
mapping the entire moon or solar system here. Uh, so you can go out of bounds. So I'm pretty much going to get straight north of Delta, and then I'm going to turn south and start looking for the cargo. So let's cancel out some of our uh, V rate so that we're not falling so fast. And let's go ahead and pitch back again and take out some of this forward velocity. In fact, we'll pretty much take out all of it because we kind of want to turn south at this point. So I think we pretty much nulled out our forward velocity. And let's uh, bring our V-rate down to zero so that we're kind of just in place. Yep, and you can see our velocity vector there in front of us. So now let's rotate to the left because we're pretty much straight north of <clears throat> delta at this point. Oops, I overshot that a little bit. All right, and now we just have to start looking. It's almost a visual inspection. We may actually end up digging into our fuel supplies. Um, okay, so my V-rate is positive, so I'm just going to tip forward and have a quick visual look. I know these are boulders. That might possibly be the module. Not sure. Let's put in a bit of forward velocity so we're heading in the direction of delta. I'll move about, let's go with that, three meters a second, because I don't want to move too fast because I don't want to overshoot. Let's actually go a little bit faster. That's a bit too slow for my taste. Again, watch that velocity vector so that we don't crash into the side of the mountain. Want to make sure we're sufficiently above it so that we don't drag the lunar feet across the <laughs> across the top of the hill there. <clears throat> I don't know what the range on the transponder is. It's not very good. Um, I don't know if there's an upgrade for that that we can get, but usually I end up locating the lost cargo visually. And when you tip over, you have to be careful. You have to be very conscientious of your V-rate, because if you're tipped over too long, you know, your V-rate gets out of control, then when you write yourself back up, you know, you, you're too late and you crash into a mountain somewhere. So I'm going to look down here. I'm actually going to go down and inspect that cavern, even though I don't see anything glittering. Mm. No, I'm, I'm actually going to go over. I'm going to keep going forward. Hopefully we'll pick up something on the transponder soon. Because we're getting fairly close to delta. All right, you can see our velocity vector has us on a collision course with the mountains. Let's go higher. And it's possible that we'll have to make multiple passes up and down this corridor between, uh, essentially between Delta and Charlie. But hopefully we will locate the, the module. Now I can say in my experience, the modules are never located like on the side of a cliff, at least not in such a precarious position that they're impossible to get. I've never found that. Um, they could possibly be located like here, or well, probably not there. Oh, so there's our beep. So, let me take out my forward velocity. Because I'm going to assume, since we're now getting the beep, it's either behind us, to the right of us, or to the left of us. So I'm going to put in a bit of power. Yeah, so that's delta there, so I'm going to say it's a little bit behind us. And I think the signal's getting weaker, so I'm translating now backwards. And I'm, gonna go, I'm going to go ahead and start rotating around to the right and just keeping an eye out. So I don't see it over there. So let's keep going this way. It might be over to the other side of us. Or it might be right below us. But let me... I didn't see anything glittering down there, so let me look over here first. 
So I want to inspect the other side of this hill. But I feel like the signal's getting a bit weaker, so I think it must be to my left. So I just got the beep indicating that we drop below 500 fuel. Let me do the top-down view. Mm, maybe not that one. Yeah, I wish I had, like, better external cameras so I could see, like, down in front of me, down to the right, that kind of thing. But again, I can pitch the vessel over. Okay, so I didn't realize we were getting so close to Delta. All right, let me rotate back around this way. I feel like we're losing signal, like that signal's getting weaker, so it must be on the other side of that hill. Yeah, because now the signal's gone. So now I'm just translating forward. So we may end up using a fuel module. In fact, I think we will. Once we get about, once I get much below 300, I'm going to click F over there. Now, if you have the uh, the VR, you can you kind of can do this. You know, you can look to the to the right, to the left, and you can access everything with the controls, which I quite like. But I don't have a VR <clears throat> uh, helmet, so I have to, you know, use keyboard and mouse for everything. I wonder if that is the module. That's possible. I think that's possible because that's kind of what it looks like, like these little dots. Let me see. Let me just tilt over again. Don't see it. Let me, oops. Get rid of that roll. Didn't mean to roll. I'm going to come over this way. I want to inspect this little canyon over here. Because somewhere over here a moment ago, that's when we were getting a signal from the transponder. So let's just see if it's in this canyon, because that would still be north of Delta. But I, I kind of actually do prefer when you have to work for it a little bit and you don't just get super lucky and see the tramp, see the lost cargo as soon as you leave your base. But this, this one is more similar to what I usually experience where you have to look around for it a little bit. But I would say it's not here. So let's start going a different direction. I don't quite remember where that signal was coming from. I thought it was... And it might be up here. It might it might not be down in the canyon. It might be on top of a cliff. Oops, I put in way too much up thrust. Now I'm climbing way too high. Um, let me think. There is a way to... I for, you, you can thrust from the top, but I don't remember what that control is. Let me see. Is it... It's not that one or that one. It's not that. I don't remember. But while I'm up here, let me look down. I do not see... I'm pretty sure that's a boulder. look around a little bit. This is actually dangerous. Alright, let's get zero back out.
Yeah, these lost cargoes are the most difficult, in my opinion, unless you just get lucky and find it immediately. Alright, let's go ahead and use a fuel module. Okay, so we got 500 fuel. Sometimes I actually can't find it, and I have to go land at a base and refuel. But I think... I think we're well past the point that we were where we were getting the signal last time. So I'm going to turn around and start heading back to Delta. Towards Delta. I'm actually going to put Delta on the map. That way I have that in front of me. Helps, helps keep me oriented. <clears throat> I wonder if there's a way to upgrade the transponder range. I haven't seen anything like that. Let me just push myself a bit more this direction and forward. Yeah, if I were to use another fuel module, I would feel more comfortable just returning to the base and refueling before, before trying to worry about locating the lost module. Because I don't want to end up in a position where I'm out of fuel and I end up crashing into the side of a, one of these cliffs. See, that thing there looks like... That must be a boulder though, right? Surely I would have seen that last time, I think. But that's exactly what they typically look like. They look like a small boulder from afar. Let me see if that's it though. But I think I would have seen that last time I was over here. Also, I think I would be getting a transponder signal. Did I turn the transponder off? No. No, that's definitely not it, because that's the other side of Delta. Okay, so since I am so close to Delta at this point, I feel more comfortable just landing and refueling, and then I'll go back out again and look. So let's go back to the C camera. Oh, I have a lot of forward velocity. So I'm overshooting the base right now, so I'm just holding back on the left stick, trying to eliminate all my forward velocity. And then we'll head back over towards the base, touch down, refuel, and then go back out and look. All right, so we should be pretty close to zero on our velocity in that direction. So a little bit more forward velocity just so we can head towards the landing pad. And we'll get touched down here, refuel. And well over 20 minutes on this video, so we'll end it. I thought for sure I would be able to find the lost cargo in the time I had left, but obviously not. But I do find this game much easier to play with the Xbox controller. It's just the way the controls are set up on the keyboard. As I mean, to, Orbiter is just second nature to me on the keyboard, but, um, but I find this game, like I said, just much easier with just the Xbox controller. All right, it's touchdown. 
All right, and we'll refuel, and then we'll call it. That, that'll be it for this video, but I will go ahead and record another one immediately after this so I can go back out and try to find this lost cargo. Now, I, now, it's, now I'm on a mission. i got to find it. So I will see you in the next video.